When it comes to modern technology, minimalism is the name of the game, and the lightweight, sleek devices we use today look nothing like the clunky boxes of yesteryear. However, there is still one very noticeable limitation in humanity's quest to build the most futuristic looking gadgets possible. Bezels, those bulky frames that surround our screens and that companies seem to be tripping over themselves to get rid of. Not just for a sexier aesthetic, but also to cram as much screen real estate as possible into smaller and smaller packages. But whether we're talking about a phone, a monitor, or a TV, it seems like bezels are still a necessity for the time being. But why? To answer, we reached out to Sasha Kron at ASUS, a manufacturer of all three of those product categories, and we'd like to thank him for providing us with an assist on this video. Let's start with the simplest reason that we still have bezels. The edges of modern LCD and LED displays need to be protected because they're made up of multiple layers that need to be sealed up somehow. I mean, think of trying to take a triple-decker sandwich home from the deli without wrapping it up in plastic first. But that's not the end of it. Beyond structural protection and support, it turns out that bezels often house the equipment that drives the display itself, such as circuits and traces that run up to the screen. And if you're talking about a monitor, these components are often stored in the bottom bezel. That's why that particular one is usually quite a bit bigger. Now, it is certainly possible to put the components behind the display, but this can add a fair amount of thickness, which may impact the product's appeal to consumers. But okay, hold on a second, Linus. My smartphone has super thin bezels and doesn't even have a gigantic chin. Why can't they just do whatever they're doing in smartphones? Well, part of why phones get all the love is out of necessity. Phones obviously have a greater need to be more portable than other everyday electronics. So it makes sense that quite a bit more work has gone into eliminating phone bezels versus the ones on monitors or TVs. And phones have the added benefit of receiving extra structural support from having the logic board and the battery built in. There's also an economic reason. Profit margins on phone displays are quite a bit higher than on monitors, laptops, and TVs because panels get produced in large batches, which means that you can make many more phones from one batch than you can larger displays. Also, phones tend to be relatively expensive for their size, meaning that manufacturers can invest more in developing ways to reduce their bezel's footprint. So some phones have their screens partially folded around the edge so that the part of the screen that needs protecting is tucked underneath the phone's back cover, allowing for narrower bezels. In some cases, this can actually be clearly seen from the outside, such as with Samsung's Galaxy Edge series. Other times, the panel drivers can actually be folded behind the display, something that is much more difficult to do on a gaming laptop. You see, quickly switching pixels on and off to get high refresh rates and fast pixel response times requires a lot of current, which means thicker wires or traces are required to carry it. Now on phones, these factors tend not to matter as much, so manufacturers can get away with using thin traces that are easier to fold. Not so on something like a gaming laptop. So all of this has meant that we look to be on a slow march towards phones with very, very minimal bezels, even phones that are nearly all screen, such as Xiaomi's concept Mi Mix Alpha. But as for the larger displays, well, it's certainly possible to make a very thin bezel out of a transparent material like glass so that it's less obvious, but to get a truly bezel-free display, the most promising technology right now looks like micro LED. You can learn more about that up here, but it can get away without using bezels because the circuitry that drives the LEDs is embedded in an extremely thin substrate that forms part of the display itself. So it doesn't need the bezels either for structural support or to hold electronic components. Of course, if you really want a bezel-free display experience right the second, you could always just go out and buy a HoloLens, as long as you don't mind looking like a total dork. Speaking of buying, Check out our sponsor, Drop.com. The HD6XX open back headphones are a mass drop and Sennheiser collaboration that has sold over 70,000 units. They're the all time best seller on Drop.com because they've got the same great sound as the HD650s, but with a few updates. 
They've got a balanced mid-range and natural sounding bass, the parts are interchangeable with others in the Sennheiser series, and they've got a 1 8 inch plug for everyday use with a quarter inch adapter for professional use. They feature Sennheiser's own warranty support and new users who sign up on drop.com can get 20 bucks off just by heading to the link in the video description. So thanks for watching guys, like this video, check out our other videos, uh, leave a comment if you have a suggestion for a future fast as possible, and don't forget to subscribe or you're never gonna see it. That'd be awkward.